Thanks, Andrew, and good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about, um, first of all, the agencies that ITP looks after, uh, talk a bit about our applications and technologies we have, uh, talk a bit more about ITP, we're a little bit unique, um, talk about some of the procurement arrangements we use and what we plan to use going forward, uh, talk a bit, a bit about future directions and then um, the inevitable I'll give my email address out later on. Um, so first of all, um, ITP looks after the Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry Department, where we're hosted under. That is not our largest agency though. Um, our largest agency is actually Natural Resources and Mines. We also look after tourism, major events. Uh, that's a relatively small department, but it has a large agenda. Um, the Commonwealth Games, it's actually the oversight function of Commonwealth Games rather than Commonwealth Games itself, which is in a statutory authority called Goldock. Uh, we look after energy and water supply. Uh, we look after environment and heritage protection, uh, national parks, recreation, sport and racing. And we also, as a service provider only, look after some smaller portions of government as a service provider only. And a good example of that is uh, the City of Science Delivery over in Eco Sciences and Bogo Road. We look after them as well. Um, I quite often get asked why those agencies. Um, the six agencies I look after, they have a lot in common. Uh, they're very much resource based. Um, they uh, all are involved in economic development of our great state. Um, and also they're very low budget, so that's why they have to share their IT. Um, so, uh, some people label us uh, basically a shared IT provider. We prefer the term cooperative. Um, typically in most shared IT provision models, it's a one size fits all. That's not how we operate at all. Um, it's very much a personalised and customised service delivery to each agency. Um, so typically commodity services are delivered on a single network. Nobody really cares where they come from. You know, we have a single service desk and those sort of arrangements. Um, but when it comes to particularly line of business applications and I suppose differentiating types of um, technologies, they are specific to an agency. So each agency has its own ICT strategic plan, which we facilitate and build. Um, each agency is quite unique in their directions and the way they go. Um, each agency has its own governance, so it's an important point in how we are. I attend a lot of information steering committees, as you would imagine. Um, most agency employees, when you talk to those uh, agencies, don't realise that they're on a bigger sh single uh, network. It just happens to be, they just see themselves as being an employee of that agency, and ITP is their ICT division. So. That's the way we operate. The other thing about ITP, a little bit unique as well in government, is we are a full cost of service chargeback provider. Absolutely no profit motive. So we are a cooperative in that regard and that we focus on those agencies and that's all. Um, some of our flagship and well-known applications are things like uh, land titles, valuations, uh, the digital cadaster, um, very well-known things in the Queensland government. Uh, they underpin the state economy. Um, Queensland Globe, I think the majority of the audience here would know what Queensland Globe's about, um, one of our flagship um, applications in government. So that actually gets as much as, you know, on average, about 5 million page views a day, sometimes up to 10 million page views a day, so fairly large scale. Obviously mining and gas, um, obviously large industries in Queensland, we have quite a big presence in, in I suppose, the regulation of those industries. Um, as Andrew mentioned before, um, the business industry portal, so that's, that's in our portfolio as well. Uh, quite a high volume, um, very, um, I suppose, popular website. And uh, I know many of you in this audience have probably used that for business licensing purposes or other things. Um, if you haven't been to that site, there's a wealth of information on that site. So I'd encourage people to go in there, particularly small businesses starting up. There's a lot of information about how to start a business and things like that. Uh, other examples of things we have is uh, EcoTrack and um, Environment Heritage Protection. So the environmental approvals processes and things like that. In agriculture, we have um, things like the agricultural property system, how to identify yourself as a farm, those types of things. And uh, another well-known thing is fire ants. So those nasty little critters, which one's trying to stamp out, and we are winning the war, by the way. Um, but it is very much a, a big battle in um, stamping them out from Queensland. Uh, we've had lots of recent success in things like remote sensing and other technologies around that. Uh, camping and park permits for national parks is fairly well known as well. Our major technologies. So we've got around about 9,000 desktops. Pretty typical government um, stack you see on the desktop. So Microsoft based. 
Um, we have Windows 7, Office 2010, Link 2010, SharePoint and Exchange. Um, with a long-term direction in line with most of the other agencies moving down an Office 365 path. However, for us, because we have a quite a stable platform, we're probably going to be one of the sort of in the middle of the pack adopters of Office 365. So we'll let the city sort out problems for us and then we'll go, that, go later on. Uh, our servers, um, basically mainly Microsoft and uh, Solaris uh, based in, in Unix and our applications are of a significant size and scale as I think I hinted at before. So these are quite um, big capabilities there. Databases, one of everything. Um, that's not surprising uh, with our legacy applications from many years back and so in the future we'll be looking at, um, as we go down the ICT as a service model, looking at absolutely rationalising those sorts of things. However, they're very stable, um, even though there's quite a lot of technologies there. Uh, EDRMS, uh, Electronic Document Management System, is based upon OpenText eDocs. Um, it's a very large installation, managed around 70 kilometres of paper records and more than 15 million electronic records as well. And obviously the trend is to reduce the paper and move into the electronic world. Other major technologies for us is uh, in our web technologies, uh, typically we're using Matrix, which is a cloud-based product. Um, for most of like the business industry portal, for example, is hosted on um, Matrix technology. Uh, Interwoven is another technology we use for content management systems. Telephony, um, predominantly VoIP based. There's a little bit of analog still there. Um, mixed sourcing model around Optus and Telstra. Uh, and it is one area we'll be focusing on in future. Uh, wide area networks, uh, we have extensive networks, as you'd imagine, with things like national parks and things like that, um, uh, based on, upon Telstra and Cisco currently. And business process management, uh, we use both Appian, uh, Appian technologies, both cloud and on-premise. Uh, procurement. Um, I do have some announcements to make around procurement. So NRS 12 and NRS 31, I know many of you in the room will know what those vehicles are because they've been around for like 15 years or so. Uh, we have historically hosted those on behalf of the government and there's been huge amounts of business gone through those panels historically. I just want to announce, and we are writing to all the vendors in, involved in those panels, that NRS 12 will not be renewed when it expires in August. Um, the future direction for government is to move to the resource manager for those particular sources. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's a fairly well known and I believe the procurement transformation, people have spoken about that in the past. So that will be the future direction for us and all the agencies eventually when, when NRS 12 expires. Uh, NRS 31 um, is being replaced by the e-services, ICT services panel and will not be renewed as well. Um, the, we are writing to vendors in regard to that. If anyone feels they may be disadvantaged in regard to that panel, I have spoken to the City of Strategic Sourcing and you're welcome to talk to them about how to get onto that panel uh, to replace. Um, going forward, my strong advice to um, vendors is try and get yourself on the ICT services panel if you're not on it. It is going to be a major procurement vehicle for agencies moving forward. Um, agencies like us are less likely to build our own panels and as we've done historically, we're more likely to use the whole of government panels. So that's one piece of advice I'd like to impart. Uh, telecoms, we use the whole of government um, 1067 and the uh, mobile contract as well. Uh, future directions for us um, is obviously ICT as a service which, uh, and the ICT strategy action plan. We have to transform ourselves um, as a historically an in-house provider to more of a commercially sourcing from the marketplace and Andrew's going to speak next uh, in a lot of more detail on that. Um, I'm not going to talk through contestability either. Um, Darren Bond spoke here in regard to communities a couple of months back and um, he did a very good job of explaining contestability so I won't go through that um, with you today and that's still available on the internet if anyone wants to see that. But essentially like most agencies we're going through those early contestability processes. For us our first cabs off the rank will be um, telephone communications and we are working with the City of Strategic Sourcing on going into that arrange, um, uh, arrangements, that moving forward. Uh, we do want to basically progress uh, VoIP rollout throughout the entire organisations. Uh, also getting out of owning printers and moving into pay-as-you-go models around printers, printers as a service. And the other one is we have extensive data centres at the moment and um, moving towards the model of not owning assets. Uh, we would like to uh, invite uh, industry to talk to us in regard to 
propositions around moving forward with our data centres, essentially so that we no longer have those in our portfolios. So it's a bit of a work in progress and it's very early days, but you're welcome to talk to us about some early ideas you might have in that regard. And um, moving on from that, we'll be following most of the other directions in ICT strategy action plan. Okay. Um, when I showed them at work that I was going to give out my email address, they said, Tony, you're crazy. Um, <laughs> no, I have done this before. I know what happens. <laughs> so no, it's OK. Please, if you're, not on a, if you're on an existing whole of government panel, you typically don't need to send in details because we know who you are. We can find you that way. If you're not and you do want to send through details, please send through your, your marketing brochures and a quick, succinct statement on sort of services you can offer. Um, and we will actually make sure that they are registered and we have keep track records of who's sent through as well. So, so you're welcome to do so. Um, I understand we're going to have questions at the end, so I will withhold those until after Andrew's sp spoken next. Um, but I'll, just some of our key websites, if you look at the uh, second from the bottom is the business and industry portal we mentioned before, and our other websites have, I suppose, the directions of those agencies. So I'll, I'll hold it over now and you can ask questions at the end. Thank you.